Hey, Tom here from The Run Testers. In this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the Skechers Go Run Razor Plus running shoe. Let's take a look. The price of the Skechers Go Run Razor Plus Hyper is around 125 pounds in the UK or $140 in the US, but you can find it for under 100 in both of those countries. The weight is 195 grams or 6.9 ounces in a men's size nine, and the drop is four millimeters. The Skechers Go Run Razor Plus Hyper is a lightweight running shoe designed to offer versatility and comfort from daily training miles to faster efforts. The shoe features a soft and responsive hyperburst midsole, a breathable mono mesh and polyester knit upper designed to help with ventilation, and a Goodyear performance outsole. The shoe is an upgrade to the previous Razor 3 Hyper, with updates to the aesthetic detailing as well as adding a roomier fit. The fit for me in the Razor Plus was true to size. It's generally a fairly comfortable, nicely fitted shoe, apart from this upper section here is quite narrow and what I would find is that my foot would press out of the um, upper over the midsole a bit. So when I'm running uh, and turning corners or moving across slightly buried terrain, it would feel like my side of my foot and my little toe was pushing a bit over the midsole. So if you've got wide feet, maybe take that into consideration. But other than that, they're a very comfortable and well-fitted shoe. I've done about 50K in the Razor Plus so far. This is actually only the second time that I've tested a Skechers shoe. Um, and the other shoe that I've tried is the Go Run Spleed Elite Hyper. The previous version of this shoe was called the Razor 3. Sometimes when you're searching online, you will find brands calling it the Razor 3 Plus, but it's actually called the Razor Plus. So keep that in mind when you're looking for this shoe. Overall, I found it to be a very comfortable, sort of general shoe to wear. I was actually surprised in the UK, we don't really know a lot about Skechers or we associate Skechers with sort of comfy shoes that people wear for going to the shops in. We don't really know a lot about their performance side of the lineups that they've got. So I was really surprised at how good this shoe was really. It just, it's a really nice sort of all round trainer, but there's a lot of things that I didn't really expect it to do. So it's a really light shoe for starters. But despite that lightness, it does have quite a lot of cushioning in it. And this um, Hyperburst midsole foam is quite an interesting midsole foam because it is very light and very bouncy. And when I first went out for a run in these shoes, it did feel like there was a lot more bouncing than, than I was expecting to get. I thought they'd be sort of, you call it sort of general daily training shoes that just keep your feet safe as you're clocking up the miles. But they were, there's a lot more bouncing than, than I thought there would be. I'd probably liken that midsole foam to something like the FF Blast foam that you get in the Nova Blast, just because it is that it does feel very cushioned. It's not the most stable of um, midsole foams, I don't think, um, which is not so bad in this shoe because it's not a very high stack, but it does feel unstable at certain points. And I mentioned in the fit there that um, when I'm running around corners and um, various terrains that my foot does sort of press up over the upper section here, this narrow bit here. And when I do that, that it, you can feel that sort of instability in that midsole foam. Having said that, it's not a really unstable shoe. It's just surprisingly less stable than you'd think from such a sort of low profile um, light shoe. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not a major problem. It does feel really good for those sort of daily training miles, very comfortable miles. And also you can pick up the pace quite a bit in this. It's a very light, pacey shoe it's um it feels great when you pick when you're kind of going faster and um again i was surprised by that as well it only has a four millimeter drop which is something that i noticed um after doing about 5k in them the first time i started to feel a little bit in my card i'm not used to um i don't run in low drop shoes very often so i did notice that with this shoe quite early on there's Really generous helping of Goodyear rubber across the ole of the outsole, which again is quite surprising considering how light the shoe is. Um, and that does offer quite a bit of protection, protection for the midsole. But what I would say is that even though it's Goodyear rubber, it doesn't offer a great deal of grip for me. I did, I, it just seemed to be um, sort of smoothing out 
over that 50k um, and I'm a bit concerned that there's a durability issue there with the outer, outer um, rubber but also in the fact that it just doesn't grip as well as I would want from something that's got good year rubber on it. I'm really not a big fan of the upper. I don't think the upper is um, very durable. I think that's going to be a bit of an issue. After 50k, it's really starting to show signs of sort of wear at the top. It's It doesn't look like a very new shoe anymore. Um, and I just think that, that the design of that top section, just it just feels quite cheap and not very structured. It started to lose a lot of that structure around the, around the front section and looks quite like an old shoe if you look at it from the top after just 50K. I think it's definitely quite a good all-rounder shoe that you would probably cover you from sort of slower, uh, longer miles up until maybe even racing if you wanted that. Um, but what I would say is that small drop is probably not enough for somebody like me who's used to like higher stacks and more cushioning in the shoe. So uh, if that's what you're looking for, then you might want to look at something a little bit thicker than this. My verdict for the Razer Plus is that it's actually a really nice shoe and a very surprising shoe. I wasn't expecting to get this from a Skechers shoe because as I mentioned in the UK, we don't know a lot about Skechers performance shoes. And it really is a nice piece of kit if you're looking for something that is gonna give you a lot of versatility over those sort of slower miles where you want a nice bit of cushioning, but also if you want a light shoe that you can pick up the pace in. I think there's issues with durability on it from what I've seen so far. I'm not a fan of the upper really, but I think um, at the price, so in the UK you can get this, I think it retails at about 120, but you can get this for about 99 pounds in most places that stock it. And the same is in a, over, the, over in the US, so you can get it for like $99 over in the US which I think is very good value for the shoe. Um, it's definitely, the shoes that it's up against in that sort of realm are things like the Hocker Rincon range, which is also a really great shoe, but this is just a little bit, seems a little bit peppier, a little bit like it's got a lot more pace in it if you want to, and just feels a little bit bouncier, especially considering that low drop, it's, it's, it's quite a surprising shoe. Um, but if you want a shoe that's gonna last you a really long time and look really nice for a, for a long time, I don't think this shoe is going to be it um, just because it's just shy, starting to show quite a few signs of wear and tear already, especially on the upper. The lower is fine, the, the outsole is fine, it's just getting a bit smoother. So I have durability issues with it, but I think for the price at £99, or hopefully you might even be able to get it cheaper at some point soon, it's a really good shoe and would work really well if you have sort of a daily high cushioned comfort shoe that you use for those long, slow miles and you want something that's a little bit more faster, a little bit more versatile for those faster miles, but you still don't want to break the bank and, and go for a full on race shoe or tempo shoe. That's it from me. Thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon. It really does make a difference. And check out the channel for all the other things we've got on there from the latest trail shoes and running shoe reviews, all the way up to the newest headphones and watches that you can buy at the moment. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon.